husband of this boy's sister. You are the husband of this boy's sister. Well, Pip, as I married your sister and was at the time what you might call a single man. And you have raised this boy with the plans of making him your apprentice, Mr. Gardry. You know, Pip, you and me were ever friends. Not but what, Pip, if you have ever if you had ever made objections to the business, such as its being opened to black and soot or such like. Has Not Pip but what they would have ever been attended to, don't you see? Has Pip ever made any objections? It is well be known to yourself, Pip, that it were the wish of your own heart, and there weren't no objections on your part. Good, and you brought his adventures with you? Well, Pip, you yourself see me put them in my pocket, and therefore you know that they are here. And you expect a no premium with the boy. Joe, why don't you answer this? No, Pip. You know it to be no, so therefore why must I answer it? Pip has earned a premium here. Take this money and give it to your master, Pip. This is very liberal on your part, Pip, and welcome with such a grateful spirit, though never looked for, far nor near nor nowhere. And now, old friend, may we do our duty. Goodbye, Pip. I'd like to come again, Miss Havisham. No, Mr. Gardry is your master now. How are you, Joe? Pip, how are you, Pip? I'm very glad to see you, Joe. And that you have that growed and that swelled and that gentle folk as to be sure you are an honor to your king and your country. And you, Joe, look wonderfully. How much has happened since I have left? Well, your sister is in no worse than she were. And Biddy, she's ever right and ready. And all friends is no backwarder, if no for not no forwarder. Except Wopsle, he's had a drop. A drop? Yes, he's left the church and went into play acting. Which the play acting has brought him to London along with me, and he wished were, if no offense, as I would you and you that. Herbert, this is my friend Joe Gardery. Joe, this is my friend Herbert. Your servant, sir. I meant to say, you two gentlemen. Do you take tea or coffee, sir, Mr. Gardery? Thank you, sir. I'll take whichever is most agreeable to yourself. How about coffee, then? Thank you, sir. Since you are so kind as to make a choice of coffee, I will not run contrary to your own opinions. But don't you never find it a little eating? Tea it is, then. I must be off into the city now. Nice to meet you, Mr. Gertrude. It was my pleasure to meet the acquaintance of such a kind gentleman as yourself. Us two being alone now, sir. Joe, how can you call me, sir? And me having the intentions and abilities to not stay much longer. I must tell you that I was informed the other day that Miss Havisham wishes to speak to you. I was also informed that Mrs. Sella has come home and will be glad to see you. But you are not going now, Joe. Pip, dear old chap, I want to be right, as you shall never see me no more in these clothes. I'm wrong in these clothes. I'm wrong out of the forge of the kitchen. You won't find half so much fault in me as you think if you think of me in my forge dress with my hammer or even my pipe. God bless you, dear old pit, old chap. God bless you.